glad we're in sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Glamour and Sugaries, it's me, Cherry. Welcome to our first holiday episode. Yes, the holidays have crept up on me and snuck up on me and now they are here. What are we gonna do today? Well, we're gonna work on holiday mug cakes, two different kinds. One of them's gonna be a red velvet from scratch mug cake, which will take about one minute to make. The other is based on something so cool. Check this out. My husband went to Costco, which is one of my favorite places, especially during Christmas, and found these elf-themed mugs that also come with mixes and frosting mixes so you can create your own mug cakes. But definitely, I am a huge fan, as you can tell from my last episode last year, of Elf. Son of a nutcracker. We will use the mix to create that and see how it tastes and I'll do a little review and hopefully it's good. So for the red velvet from scratch mug cake, I'm just gonna use a ready-made frosting. Cream cheese, you know, goes with red velvet. And we're gonna use some cupcake toppers to put on top so they look really festive. If you're a big fan of home goods like I am, you can pick up a little kit like this. It's like $5 to $6 each and you can use them for cupcakes or little dessert creations for the holidays. Also, you might want to have some handy dandy sprinkles in the colors and holiday festivities of your choice. Before we start on the recipe for these, I want to give a big shout out to some really good friends of mine. First of all, Yen! Thank you so much, Jens, for watching. I really appreciate you always asking me about my episodes and checking out all my new recipes. I really, really appreciate it. Love you. And of course, Mom Teresa. I also want to give a shout out to my friend, Nick. Thanks, Nick, for watching and being a fan of my baked goods. Please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up to like my video, and the notification bell. It helps my channel, thanks. Now, mugs come in different shapes and sizes. This one is a nice, sort of small, medium, some medium mug. Also, I got a fork to break up any flour and a spoon to stir it with, as well as a little sieve. Now, this is very convenient because it breaks up all of that clumpy flour so you have a nice, smooth batter. And don't forget the measuring spoons. Also, mug cakes are great if you've never baked anything before because it's a quick intro to baking. Let's get started. Take your mug and we're gonna start with the wet ingredients. You want one egg. Make sure your eggs are room temperature. It's gonna incorporate a whole lot better if it's the right temperature. That's one of the key things to remember in baking two tablespoons of canola oil or an oil that is flavorless. One tablespoon of sour cream, or you can use buttermilk if you like buttermilk. One teaspoon of vanilla. And then take your red food coloring. This is a gel color, which we use for cakes and frostings. A quarter teaspoon of that. Look at that ooey gooey, weird color. Yes, we are not making Halloween mug cakes today. Nope, but I promise you it's going to be the red velvet, a little bit darker color. To start with the dry ingredients, you just need to get your sieve ready if you have one. If you don't, don't worry about it. Put it right on top of the cup and then take your flour and fluff it up. And then you're just gonna take a tablespoon of that and then gently just level it out. That's one, two, and a total of three tablespoons of flour. Scrape the sieve down like that, and you'll see that all the lumps will start to disappear. Or you can even go like this if you want to at the end, but try not to get it all over the place. And any of those lumps and bumps that are still in there, you can just dump them out into the trash. Next is the cocoa powder. You want to get unsweetened natural cocoa powder. 
You don't want to use the hot cocoa mix. It's not the same. That has sugars and other additives in it and it is not pure chocolate in the right form. Also, there's tons of different varieties of chocolate. If you want to do the dark chocolate, you can get a Ghirardelli, you can get a Valrona. That will up the ante of your mug cake for sure. So now add one and a half tablespoons of the ground natural cocoa to your sieve. Yeah, <laughs> making a mess. <laughs> I love making a mess. Come on, sister. You can do it. Two tablespoons of sugar. One, two. If you want it a little bit sweeter and you don't use frosting, you can make it up to two and a half tablespoons of sugar. But I wouldn't recommend going too sweet because you don't want it, you know, cloyingly sweet. Now we just need a quarter teaspoon of baking powder and we're ready to mix. Please, please, please do not forget that we do not want to over mix the batter. We only want to mix it until it's fully incorporated. Now check this out. When you look in the bottom there, there are still some dry pieces. Make sure you use your fork and get into those crevices to scrape up the bottom before you do your last mixing. And that's it. Time to microwave. And mine is an 1100 watt microwave. If yours is 1200 watt, it's got more power. So you may have to adjust this. But mine's gonna be 55 seconds. It can range anywhere from 45 seconds to about one minute. Yes, that's all. After 45 seconds, you're gonna see there's a little bit of wetness on the top. You may need to add a few more seconds so that some of that disappears. But also remember, as this cools, it will cook a little bit further. So I'm just gonna pop it in for a few more seconds. Our mug cake is ready. We're just gonna go ahead and let this cool before we frost it. Otherwise, we're just gonna have a mess of gooey frosting on there, which isn't so bad if that's what you want. We're gonna work on the second one. Ooh, I'm so excited. We get to unbox it. So the cool thing is they come out in four different mugs, so if you wanted to give one as a gift, you totally could. But let's open it and see what we got. Oh my gosh, it's like Christmas all over. Okay, there's a little frosting mix. And there's the cake mix. Also, I want to caution you. Here's a tip on mugs. Make sure you don't have a mug that has any metallic material on it because you can't pop that in the microwave. It's not microwave safe. There's directions on the box itself, so I'll put those so that you can follow them. But as a baker, I like to do the wet ingredients first and then the dry ingredients because it just incorporates better. All you need is one egg, one tablespoon of vegetable oil, and one tablespoon of milk. Whiskey, whiskey! And just add in their cake mix. This one's chocolate. Probably a spoon is better, because it won't scrape your mug. Now, if you're presenting this to someone, you definitely want to clean off the edges first before you cook it, because once you cook it, it's going to be stuck on there. It won't be pretty. Now the directions say microwave for two minutes. I don't know, I'm a little skeptical on that. I think I'm gonna go with one minute and see if that works because I do not want to overcook the cake. If once you overcook it, it's gone, you're done. Right. You are done. Better undercook than overcook. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> right now it's kind of bubbling over. So I'm gonna put 30 seconds more. I took it out at a minute and a half and it looks completely dry except for a little bit of the edge. But you definitely have to test your microwave. Every microwave is different. I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool now and then we're gonna frost it. Now for the frosting, it says put one frosting bag with one tablespoon of butter and a one teaspoon of milk. I think this is just powdered sugar. That's what it looks like to me. All right, now you're gonna need a little bit of the milk. Just make sure your butter's the right temperature or it's not going to incorporate well into that confectioner sugar. And there's your frosting. So let's try it. Mm -hmm, yeah, tastes like buttercream. This frosting for sure is very soft. So the best way to do this 
is not to pipe it on because it's not gonna hold its shape at all. Take that frosting and just go on over the top with it and spread it on. I just love these blue sprinkles. So I'm gonna sprinkle some on top there. All right, beautiful sprinkles on there. But look, we can incorporate these guys into our mug cake. And then a little gingerbread man right on top. It's still really hot. <laughs> I can't wait to eat this. How about you? Oh yeah, deliciously. It looks Perfect. good, right? Does it look pretty? Oh, yeah. that looks so cute. Now to frost my second one, I'm gonna use the cream cheese frosting in this. But the best thing to do first is mix it up. Then we're gonna get our piping bag ready. This one's just a 12 inch Wilton. And then I have a 6B tip, which you can pick up at any store like Target or Walmart, kind of French tip there. And it makes a nice little swirl. So I cut off the tip of the piping bag, not too much, and then I inserted the tip down there. You wanna insert it so it doesn't disrupt the little teeth there. It's gotta go past the teeth. Add some of our frosting by flipping open the bag. And push that frosting on into the bottom of the bag there. Then you just twist the bag and make sure your cake is mostly cooled. Just start in the middle there. Squeeze the bag and move it on outward to get a swirl. And sprinkle some sprinkles on top of that. I want different colors, so I'm just gonna keep on sprinkling. Now all we have to do is put Blitzen on top. There we go. And there's our mug cake, yay! It's time to taste these delicious little creations. I cannot wait. Okay, this one is chocolate with vanilla frosting. And this is the Costco one, so let's see. In terms of its tenderness, softness, I give it about a five to six. Ooh, that looks yummy. But if you eat it right away, it's gonna be a lot more tender. And the flavor is pretty good. I would give it a pretty good above average flavor. Time to try the red velvet that we made from scratch. All right, here's a bite. Can you see that? Ooh, yeah, nice and tender inside. And there's the bite, ooh. So in terms of this one being really tender, actually this has been waiting longer than this one and I would give it an eight or nine. It's really good with that red velvet flavor. I would highly recommend that you make this at home. Jens, I'm talking to you boy, make this for your mama. She's gonna love you for it and your dad too and your brother. Thank you everybody for watching. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up, and share this video with your family and friends. Thanks so much. I'm going a little holiday crazy, I think, Dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, oh, I don't know, it's maybe Christmas. It's maybe Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> also, there's tons of different mug cakes. <laughs> Come on, you sticky. Oh, oh, where's my frosting mix?